What's up, Physics? Welcome back to the Dirt Bike Shed. Welcome back to the Dirt Bike Shed. We're about to do some physics. Uh, this is going to be very simple today. We're going to talk about some circles. Uh, so let's get started. Now, I signed you a simple quiz to do. And uh, I like some of the questions on that quiz. And they remind me of some terms I didn't use. Now, let's say you're driving a car and you start to go whoop in a circle, right? Start to go in a circle. All right. Boom. That's a pretty good circle. We've got the radius of the circle, right? And let's pretend that your car, we're looking at your car from above. That's why it just looks like a rectangle. Your car is at this point on the, uh, on the circle. So you're going like this. We're going uh, anti-clockwise. Now, the force on your car is towards the center. That's what the tires are making the car do. They're making the car keep going towards the center when you have the steering wheel turn. What if you hit a bunch of ice? Then you would travel off in a straight line. What do you call it when you go straight off from a curve? You call that a tangent. You're going off on a tangent. Like I used to do in class all the time, right? Go off on a tangent. So the velocity right here of the car is represented by a single arrow. So we've got a velocity around the curve, and if we're going to change velocity 360 times to go in a circle because velocity has to do with direction, right? <clears throat> and the force is to the center. And if you travel off in a straight line, you hit some ice or you're on a string, you're being slung around on a sp string, and the spring breaks, boop, you're going to go off straight on a tangent, correct? All right, next thing. Let's take a look at some stuff. We've got a formula now. We've got a formula. Centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. And you know very well that this part of the equation is really just the letter a. Because centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. So what, what if we have this car here and this car weighs a thousand kilograms, right? Well... If we doubled the weight of the car, then we would be doubling this number right here. Does that make sense? So if you put a 2 right there to double it from 1,000 to 2,000, if you put a 2 right there, wouldn't you just double the force, right? So if you double the mass, you end up doubling the force, correct? All right, let's think about something else. What if we doubled our velocity? What if we were going around the same turn? We're going twice as fast. Then you would be putting a 2 here, a 2 times here, and that 2 would be what? Squared. So if you went twice as fast, if you double your velocity, then you end up with 4 times the force, right? Because it would be 2 squared. Are you with me? What if you doubled the radius? If you change it from being 1r down here to 2r, if you double the radius, then you're up with 1 over 2, and the force would be half. Now, I know I talked very really quickly, but you can play the video over again. So, doubling the mass doubles the force. Doubling the radius halves the force. Doubling the velocity quadruples the force, right? Because it's 2 squared. So, anytime when we've done many problems like this, they ask you about doubling part of a problem or tripling it. Just put a number in for that letter, and it'll give you the answer, all right? So do that simple uh, quiz that I assigned, and I'll also give you another quick assignment. But watching this should super, super help you out. Uh, that's it. Peace out.